Good morning, all. <clears throat> um, we're gonna keep going today with um, the uh, sandwiches and pizza. So today we're gonna talk about canapes and open-faced sandwiches. Basically, canapes are open-faced sandwiches, they're cold, and then we're gonna talk about hot open-faced sandwiches too. So let's get going. All right, sorry, let me move, let me adjust all my stuff. Um, <clears throat> so if we go in here, basically, this is this first picture you're looking at right there is a canopy. Um, all right, here we go. Oh, let's skip through these. And canopies are pretty cool because they're, they're like the classic, if you look at this, it's like the classic um, hors d'oeuvre, okay? We did these a lot when I worked in restaurants because they're easy to tray pass. And basically it's a some sort of bread vessel that you fill with stuff. Um, these ones kind of look like a crostini, which traditionally is thin sliced Italian bread. And you basically lay it on, on a tray and you make like a crouton almost. Actually it's a crouton. You lay it on a tray, you soak it. I mean, you give it a pretty heavy dose of uh, extra virgin olive oil, salt, granulated garlic, pepper, whatever you want to do, Parmesan. And you bake these just to firm them up. Because if you use a wet or a, a, a plain piece of bread on here, the canapé will typically fall apart unless you do something so, somewhat toasted or it's a really thick piece of bread that's really heavy and you do a, like a heavy mayonnaise based um, mixture on top. It's all kind of a game thing because basically what this is, is you, you carry these trays around and you hand, you walk around a room like a giant wedding and you pass these out, um, ask people if they want one, they pick it up with their fingers or they have a big buffet, um, which we're going to see in a minute of canapes. And these can be savory or sweet. So even if you have like a tart shell, um, those are usually called pedophores if it's sweet, but you know, it's the same concept canapes are the savory ones so it almost looks like a little pie shell but they're they might have like some sort of beef filling in it or um a crab salad or something so we're going to keep going so yeah one slice of bread filling or topping a canapé type of hors d'oeuvre and that's how you that's how you spell hors d'oeuvre by the way um hot or cold bite-sized finger food served before a meal and these are actually a lot of places now are serving them after meals, especially big weddings, because people will get there after the long wedding, they want a snack. So they'll show you, they'll give you these little canapes or hors d'oeuvres. Then you have dinner. And then if you think about it, once you eat dinner at like five and you have dancing and, you know, all that other ritual stuff, some people are at these places till like 11 o'clock. So six hours between the time you eat dinner and the time you're done with the party, they want more food. So a new tradition is now people, um, let me move me again, is now uh, having canapes late. That was something that they started doing when I was working in catering in high school. So canapé, uh, bread or toast cutouts, English muffin, crackers, Melba toast, tiny unsweetened pastry shells, like I was saying. Um, the spread could be flavored butter, cream cheese, some sort of meat. Um, base alternatives, it could be a fruit shell. Um, it could be a vegetable, so like a cutout tomato or a cucumber that's hollowed and you put food in it, um, or it could be a meat, you know. All right, so there's two videos I'm going to show you guys. This one, we'll start with this one. This is at a wedding. So this is called Finger Food Buffet Catering, and this is just amazing to see this. So I want you guys to watch this.
All right, so you kind of get the gist. <clears throat> what you're seeing is basically an order buffet set up, and it looks, if you can see the background, I don't know where this is, but it's someplace pretty fancy. Um, all, every single one of those things was made by hand, okay? <clears throat> every single, you see the flowers, those are edible flowers, every single dish in here, every single piece of this wasn't just plopped in there, but it was placed in there purposefully um, by hand. So sometimes these guys will take tongs or like a pair of chopsticks and layer each little cup with all that food, like right here, like all that stuff has to be placed in there so it doesn't smear the sides and it doesn't look bad. Every, you know, they make it like a work of art. I guarantee just for that hors d'oeuvre buffet right there in that location, whoever has having this party, that probably cost close to 15 to $20,000 just for all that food. I know people will be like, no, there's no way. But yes, that would probably cost fifteen to $20,000. Easy. <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot my notebook. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the one I want to show you just pretty wise. Like that's a very <clears throat> amazing buffet. Um, I've worked parties like this before. I did one where we had over a thousand people that came into the party. And we did hors d'oeuvres like that. So we did like this, um, it was a lobster martini, which was basically this the whole lobster meal inside of a, a glass. And we did, a, we had a thousand glasses lined up and each one got, you know, a little bit of this sauce, you know, a little bit of this other like lobster tail mixture, and then a little bit of something else. And then a lobster claw coming out of it. And so each one was made by hand. And we had to cook all those lobsters and make enough lobster like salad to fill up every single one. So it, it's amazing. That's why you pay fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to do it. Okay, this one is pretty funny. Um, this is the egg cook off um, or the egg off. So these guys have to make. They compete of who makes the best um, kind of like potluck or derv uh, for their friends. So let's watch this one. My name is John, I'm 49. I have been cooking for about 25 years. Jalen might lose today just on account of experience. I can be a little lazy at times and not follow recipes to just get a dish done, but uh, a lot of times I do find myself being experimental. My name is Jalen, I'm 23 years old. I think my secret weapon in the kitchen is definitely my spices. If John was standing next to me right now, I would tell him I'm not scared of him. Let's get cracking. So I just found out I have some friends coming over tonight and uh, I want to make a quick appetizer that uh, will not only taste good, but uh, impress them. I'm going to be making uh, eggs canopy. So I need some boiled eggs. This is about a quarter cup of mayonnaise. I want to add a little bit of Dijon mustard to it. I like spicy. So I'm just going to add a little bit of hot sauce. And this is going to basically be our topping for the egg when I put the egg on the toast. And then I'm going to cut up my toast. If Jalen isn't nervous, he should be because uh, I got my A game going right now. We are making a similar thing, so it comes down to preparation and presentation. Now we'll just top them off. A little dollop, the secret sauce. It's gonna have a nice little bite from the hot sauce that I think pairs nicely with the whole egg and toast. Now I'm gonna top it off with some bacon. Then I'm just gonna uh, put a little bit of chive color, a little flavor. I'm hoping uh, Jalen's getting a little worried here. I believe my dish is gonna turn out a lot better than his. And there you have it. And I guarantee you these things won't last but a minute. Jalen, if you're watching this, you better be a little nervous because uh, I think I got you. So I'm gonna be making eggs and bacon canapes. So first I'm gonna start with um, boiled eggs. I already boiled them previously, so now I'm going to peel them. I would say I mostly use my hard-boiled eggs um, with egg salad. Um, that's a big thing that I grew up with. I have a delicious spicy mustard right here, so I'm gonna mix it with my mayonnaise to really bring it over to the top. So we're just gonna add a little bit in there. My friends really like something with some tang, so definitely think that they're gonna be very happy with this. 
John, he's he's an old school teacher, but I definitely think I'm going to teach him a few new things today. I'm planning on using some ham, which I think is going to kind of take my egg can of paste over to the top. So I'm actually going to be using a circular cookie cutter. This way I can really be precise with my egg canapes and really give that presentation that I want my friends to be very impressed by. So now I'm going to do the ham. I'll arrange them as so. It's really bound to be a very delicious dish that I'm sure my friends will be pleased with and John will be very jealous of being beat by a 23 year old. So now I'm going to cut my eggs and then I'm going to garnish it with a little bit of my special sauce, some bacon, and a little bit of parsley. As you can see, this was very easy to make, did not take me very long. Definitely recommend using this recipe whenever you are in a bind for time and you want to really impress your friends with something very easy, but it looks like it took a lot more time. Mmm, John, you should be worried. I am definitely going to win today. I'm going to beat John today. If you think I won the challenge today, let me see the comments below. If you think my dish won, please. <clears throat> so give me your opinion, which one you think would work. I think they both looked good. Um, it's funny how similar they, they use the different things. Um, let me stop share real quick. I just want to see something. Okay. I just want to make sure the sound was on. Okay, um, so those are different types of canapes. And you saw how easy, the reason I put this video in here for you guys is because <clears throat> I know you're not to the stage where you're having a bunch of people over and making hors d'oeuvres and stuff for them. But when it comes time for you guys to have um, family dinners and family gatherings, I guarantee if you made something like this and you saw how easy that was, um, you would be like the superstar, you know, because everybody's traditionally always has like deviled eggs, which are awesome. But if you add a little flavor to it or add a little something else to it, you know, <clears throat> it, people would really appreciate it. And especially with older people, if they see the younger people like coming up and helping out with dinners and stuff, um, I don't know, they give you a lot of, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a good feeling. I was always the kid who, like once I got older in high school, I always ended up helping in the kitchen. And then now I just, most family meals, I make food like Thanksgiving and stuff, like I cook all that stuff, so. All right, let's go, come on. Oh, sorry, this thing always does this. All right, so next one, um, these are a whole nother ball game. So these are called tea sandwiches. Um, these are another type of cold sandwich. And the reason I put this on here, actually this was in here, but it's a, another type of sandwich and I want you guys to see it. Um, tea sandwiches are small cold sandwiches served on bread or toast. Um, there's no crust. They cut off the crust on these um, traditionally. Cut into shapes. Um, same, same type of filling as canapes, but you're not, you're not going to grind it up. A lot of times canapes will be something chopped up fine because it's small bites. These are picked up and eaten like a regular sandwich and it can be open faced. Traditionally, <clears throat> I put this in here. So traditional after afternoon tea at the Savoy in London. And you're gonna see, this is a really neat video because this guy goes into this like, he gives a little history, but shows you this very, very swanky play, uh, hotel in London that serves these sandwiches. And you'll kind of see the feel of why they do this. I mean, this room is absolutely gorgeous when you see it. Um, we made these before at work and you don't make them super, you're not making like a hero. You're not making some piled sandwich. You're making something very flavorful and small. Okay. So, and they could be sweet or savory, um, like this, this is a cucumber sandwich. Okay. So they'll make some sort of spread like mayonnaise or like a, um, like a cream cheese whip that they'll put on here and then put the, the cucumber on there. They're very light. And actually when you, <clears throat> when you make these, they sell loaves of bread. I don't know if you can see this in the picture. So see my hands, they sell the loaves of bread. You guys buy them sliced like this. They make bread sliced lengthwise. And the reason they do that, the reason I even know this is because I searched for it when I worked catering because we used to do these little tea parties um, where people would get together and they'd have like a, a baby shower or something like that. And they'd hire us to come in and cater and they wanted these fancy little sandwiches. <clears throat> and then these companies around here would start making this sliced bread like that. Um, one for schools because they can make a giant peanut butter and jelly really fast and then cut it for school kids. Um, and then we started using them for tea sandwiches. 
So here's two pictures of tea sandwiches, and then I'm gonna play this one for you because it's really, really neat. Hi guys, this is Steve from Time to Dessert. Today we are going to experience yet another traditional afternoon tea, this time at the Savoy. It has pretty positive reviews on the internet and it's regularly being mentioned amongst the best traditional afternoon teas in London. I'm expecting the quality of the food to be excellent and the main distinguishing factors from other traditional afternoon teas we already tried, like the Ritz or the Claridge's, to be mainly the interior of the Thames for your restaurant, service and in general the atmosphere of the afternoon tea. I mean, just look at that place. The Savoy is a luxury hotel located in the Strand in the city of Westminster in central London. Hotel opened on 6th of August 1889 and was the first luxury hotel in Britain, so it's no surprise that its afternoon tea is suitably traditional and is an enduring custom that has been a feature of the hotel since it opened. The Savoy's afternoon tea can be enjoyed in the Thames foyer, the heart of the Savoy, where the stunning glass dome floods the room with a natural light. The room is very spacious and allows enough privacy for each table. This, in combination with the sound of melodious piano, makes a perfect afternoon tea atmosphere. It is truly relaxing and my wife and myself enjoyed it a lot. The Savoy's afternoon tea menu offers all the traditional afternoon and high tea favorites. A great selection of teas served with finger sandwiches, homemade scones with clotted cream, jam and lemon curd. Finished with a range of delicate and imaginative pastries and signature cakes that are handcrafted each morning and are as delicious as they are beautiful. All this is created by the Savoy's executive pastry chef Daniel Paris, who apparently has a true passion for desserts. I think we could definitely be a good friend. Anyway, I could instantly see that pastry chef loves desserts because cakes were one of the best I had from all afternoon teas I tried so far and made a stunning finish to already amazing experience. Also, I shouldn't forget to mention that in addition to Savoy's classic traditional afternoon tea and high tea, they also offer a vegan afternoon tea and a vegetarian afternoon tea. So I actually mentioned to them that I'm, we are kind of celebrating the thousand subscribers of my channel with this afternoon tea experience. Thank you very much. We will enjoy this video. See how much that cost? 151 euros. Okay. So if you read this, um, steam, I don't know why it says steam salmon. Okay. Just the high afternoon tea or the afternoon tea and one high tea, $65 and $75. And this is in euros. A euro currently, I'm not sure that the value, but that would be like <clears throat> when I was there, that would be like 200 American dollars. So $200 for this which i mean it's really amazing and it's it's something that like if you go there and try it it's it's you're there for the experience i know a lot of people would scoff at like paying that much money for food um but it's it's like going to disney world it's like well you go to disney world you get some chicken fingers and fries and you're like all oh, these taste like every other chicken fingers and fries i was like but yeah you're in disney world this guy is at like the oldest well not the oldest but one of the most famous hotels in london so you know you don't get that very often all right, so we're gonna keep moving. Hi guys, this is Steve from Time to Dessert. All right, okay, so <clears throat> this last, or this isn't the last one, I think we have. I'm Adam Richmond. Sorry, this gets into hot sandwiches, okay? Um, this is the open-faced hot sandwich. There's several types of these. Um, the most famous open-faced hot sandwich that I've heard of is called the Hot Brown in Louisville. So this guy, I'm going to show you <clears throat> on here because this guy's famous. You've probably seen him. 
it's the man versus food guy that goes around and eats these like giant things until he gets sick. Um, but this is about the hot brown. Uh, once, so basically an open face sandwich, one slice of buttered or unbuttered bread, um, half a roll topped with hot meat or fillings, cover with the topping, sauce or cheese, broil quickly, melt the cheese, and it could be an order for the smaller version of it. And I want to say, oh, that didn't get in here. Hold on. Go back. Sorry, technical difficulties here. All right, so we're gonna watch this one. And then there's another one I actually wanna show you. I thought it was on here, but apparently I must have uh, not transferred it over. So we're gonna watch this one first. And then there's another one that's very famous you guys have probably heard of that is called the Beef Manhattan. I'm Adam Richmond. For years, I was one man on a quest to discover the country's greatest chow down joints. Oh man, that was awesome. And take on its legendary food challenges. Mountain of cheese mill, the five pound nacho challenge. This is the stuff of legends. Now, it's your turn. Are you ready for a challenge? Three, two. greatest food legends and check out a joint that's as stimulating to the eye as it is to the taste buds. <laughs> Louisville, Kentucky is a town that embraces tradition. And that tradition is shown in everything from the best bats in baseball to the Brown Hotel and their signature sandwich, the Hot Brown. Since 1926, Louisville's claim to culinary fame has been the Hot Brown, an open-faced hot turkey sandwich served on Texas toast and topped with bacon and a savory Mornay sauce. And while you can get it all across town, locals say that no one does it better than the place that invented it, the Brown Hotel. What is your favorite element of the dish? Mine has to be the turkey. It's really tender, it's nice and juicy, and it just works so well in the whole dish. Now, have you had hot browns anywhere else in Louisville? Yeah, and nothing compares. If you're gonna have a hot brown, you have to come to the Brown Hotel. I'm at the Brown Hotel. Yes. I'm in luck, big up. Only my luck at the track were that good. The legend began in 1926 when Chef Frederick Schmidt created the hot brown for weary ballroom dancers. This was meant as sort of uh, late night drunk eats. It was absorbing all that bourbon so they can go to bed a little bit easy that way. Well, how do we make the official original hot brown sandwich here at the Brown Hotel? Well, we start with Texas toast. Chef Laurent cuts one slice into a square and another into two triangles. We don't want the dry part. We want kind of the soft inside, soak up the morning. Mm -hmm. When you eat that bread, it's nice and tasty. All right, now, do we break the turkey up by hand or do we chop it up? Or? No, we break it by hand. We want to keep it as most uh, natural as possible. I love that. We add two wedges of beefsteak tomatoes and load the dish into the oven. While it cooks, we make the marvelous Mornay sauce. This is sauce de Mornay. It is the sauce that rocks the cradle. And it's the only one you'll ever need. So it starts like a bechamel sauce. So you have butter, you have flour, and then usually milk. Correct. The little difference that we do here at the Brown Hotel is we eliminate the milk and the classic bechamel, and we do it strictly with cream. Strictly with cream. Now, what kind of cheese are you going to use to We're actually We're using make it? Uh, Pecorino Romano. Pecorino Romano, it's an Italian cheese, and has um, an oddly sharp bite, so it's going to work with those big flavors of the bacon and that roasted turkey. Oh, my gosh. My, oh, my, oh, Mornay. We take the turkey out of the oven and ladle on a delicious blanket of Mornay. Nice and slow. What do we add to this dish next? We got some nice bacon. <laughs> oh. We get to add bacon to it. We cross two slices of bacon, sprinkle on more cheese, and slide it into a broiler known as a salamander. Because we're using an earthenware crock, it's going to say melty and juicy, and oh my god, put it in the damn salamander. I can... <laughs> melty bliss is achieved, and the hot brown is complete. <laughs> oh my gosh, OK. <laughs> Crispy bacon, roasted juicy turkey, melted cheese, the acidic burst of the tomato that cuts through it. It's superb. And the fact that the bread is both toasted and gets spongy, it soaks up all the flavor. Without question, 
one of my favorite comfort foods in the world. Yep. Right here in Louisville, Kentucky. Très, très bien, c'est parfait. Merci. Okay, so you guys saw that. That is probably one of the most, I've had one of those, I'm not at that place, but I've had one of those before. And it is amazing. Like it's, <clears throat> it's probably one of my favorite sandwich dishes too. Of course I can't eat it, but um, just the sauce. If you think about it like Alfredo sauce, that's kind of similar to what they're talking about. Alfredo is a little more sharp, but um, on top of the hot turkey and then bacon on top and then that sauce and it's, it's ridiculous. So that is uh, one. Um, so one thing I want you, <clears throat> the next one, so I'm going to go to this real quick because uh, there was another video I wanted you guys to see about the, uh, I'm where, where did that go? Is that it? No. There's another roast beef one. Hopefully I'll see it on here real quick so you guys can uh, see it. Um, it. It looked really, really good. And that, oh, there it is right there. Okay, so we're going to watch this one. What, what you're seeing, so I kind of pause this song for a minute. You realize that's a different guy. So this has been cooking. I can't see the temperature, but basically that is called an inside round of beef. That's from the hind quarters of a, of a cow. It's a massive piece of meat. It probably weighs close to 30, 35, maybe 40 pounds, depending on the size. Um, cooked, roasted, and what they did is they slow roasted this, okay? they didn't cook this really, really fast. As you could see, it was a completely different person wearing a different outfit that took it out of the oven. Um, nice, medium rare, or not medium rare, but about medium, and they're gonna slice it. I like the music, but we're going to go. So if you guys think about, I want to, <clears throat> I might show you guys a video tomorrow on Arby's roast beef. So you know what that is. Cause you guys, if you've ever heard of roast beef, like, oh, I've had Arby's before, or a lot of the roast beefs that you see inside the grocery store, what you just saw there is called a whole muscle beef. Okay. And you see how he did that with the mashed potatoes. That's how they do this. So they can get the big pool of gravy in here. Um, that was a whole inside round of roast beef. That is like the best. The stuff they have at Arby's, I can't wait to show you guys a video of how they make that because it's basically like a liquid package that they bake and then it forms a solid mass. We'll, we'll watch a couple of videos on that. So I'm gonna keep going with the music, but look at all the gravy on here, the bread, the gravy, that, that's, that's amazing. I really wanted you guys to see that just because of what it is. Um, I better stop that or it's gonna keep playing. Oh yeah, stop. Okay, um, just because of what it is, I thought it was really, really cool. Um, it's a really neat dish. And then we're gonna watch the grilled cheese one on here and then we'll probably stop because <clears throat> it's, it's pretty long. All right, so let's watch this grilled cheese. This is pretty amazing. So these guys, oh, hold on, I'm gonna talk about hot sandwiches again. Okay, so grilled sandwiches are toasted. Um, most famous is grilled cheese. Like I make those for my daughter. You know, white bread, butter on both sides, American cheese, and you just toast it until it's got a nice crisp uh, outside. 
these are taken to a whole new level. Um, we've done grilled cheese at work before. Uh, gosh, we, we did one that we made our own mozzarella, smoked the mozzarella, cut it, did a grilled portobello mushroom, put it, sliced it, put it inside with that. And I think we, that was a vegetarian one. Um, and then made a grilled cheese on a really nice marble rye. It was delicious. Um, I've had them where they have skewered bacon or skewered shrimp wrapped in bacon and then do like a bacon wrap, you know, a shrimp bacon BLT, you know, grilled cheese. I mean, people have gotten amazing with grilled cheese sandwiches. Same concept. It's something you can pick up and walk around with. <clears throat> Butter outside of bread, brown on griddle or hot oven. I've never done one in the oven before. Um, so we're going to watch that today and then we'll pick up tomorrow with paninis because paninis are amazing Italian street food because I'm Italian and everything in Italy is awesome. So let's watch this one. Oh, real quick. This up here, this is a food truck that does 3,000 grilled cheese sandwiches every day. We go through, on a weekly basis, tons of cheese, basically. It's a lot. If we're doing three festivals in a weekend, we can probably take between two and three tons of cheese. Two and three tons. Do you guys realize one ton is 2,000 pounds? Okay, so three tons is six thousand pounds of cheese for sandwiches off that little truck. That looked absolutely amazing. Um, I can't even imagine what that tastes like. It looked delicious. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, I gotta make a note. That, that, that was like, I think one of the coolest videos that we've seen on here, just, just because of the sheer volume and then what they do. So those guys, if you could imagine if they served 3000 sandwiches a day, if they charged $5 a sandwich, do you do the math? That is a ton of money. Um, I mean, I'm sure it takes a small army to make all those sandwiches, but you saw that they're cooking them on. It looked like one of those Blackstone like grills 
that you, you know, they mounted in a truck, but they probably had a commercial one. Um, but it's a genius idea, just putting everything in the sandwiches, making, you know, there's not a whole lot of prep. Well, there's a lot of prep, but there's not a whole lot of uh, stuff you have to make for it. You know what I mean? You got to cook your bacon. There's not a lot of meat on a lot of those. So I don't know. I thought it was amazing. I thought that was a really good video. So those are just some sandwiches. We'll start tomorrow with uh, the panini. And then I have just days of sandwiches. I really want you guys to see these. I know a lot of people just, like I said, people are thinking, oh, sandwiches, it's just a sandwich, but it's really not. Um, there's a lot of money to be made with these. And I mean, you could open up a, you know, I've heard rumors that the hot dog vendors with the little carts in New York City make close between 60 and $70,000 a year selling hot dogs. So always think of it as a career because you could open up a stand making grilled cheese. I guarantee if somebody made a grilled cheese place like that around here, they'd be a millionaire. All right. So there you go. There'll be um, four questions for you guys and uh, I'll see you soon.